A door beetle. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, there he is. I know someone. Welcome to the sauna. Around. Good. Okay. <laughs> we'll waiting for you. Thank you for waiting for us. Hey, no problem. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, guys. So, intense microphone. How much does it mean to you to come back to the United States where you kind of started training and uh, have an opportunity for the United to capture the United States championship? Man, it's huge because when I left <laughs> for Japan, man, I couldn't even walk into a building without getting booed out. <laughs> Baby face or he <laughs> People hated me. And then thank thankfully for Japan, people have, you know, oh, he doesn't suck that bad, you know? And then for the U.S. championship, seeing what we're trying to do in America as a company, I mean, that's the symbol of what we're doing, I think, the U.S. title, you know? So to have that chance, I mean, obviously, I say it every damn interview, but this is the biggest match of my life, again! So, it's huge. What are your thoughts on your own development as a person and as a wrestler since leaving the, the auspices of World Wrestling Entertainment? I think that I am just now uh, more confident, and it's... Uh, the New Japan system and the New Japan atmosphere is better for me. I don't do really good when I'm like, oh God, if I, if I walk to the right here, I might get fired. I can't do, I can't perform like that. In a, in a thing where you have to be creative and be yourself and let your personality shine through, that's what pro wrestling is, right? I can't do that when I'm scared if I'm gonna get fired. I just remember always like constantly judging myself as I was doing things like, you know what I mean? Like sure. outside of my head, watch myself. Oh, oh, that sucks. And just, it's just not for me. I was just out in Daytona for CEO. You were out there. What was your take on just how do you think the show went? And just do you think that is a good sort of way for New Japan to sort of cross over and build more fans? Is doing events like that? With yeah. I mean, oh, I thought it was really cool because it reminded me we did some Australian shows maybe uh, a few months ago, and it was kind of the same, like pretty bigger, like big arenas. It was like. Uh, three, four thousand people. I don't know how many were at the CEO thing, but uh, it was it was it was cool. It was professional. It was in Daytona, but uh, I, yeah, there's a crossover obviously with people who love video games and people who love pro wrestling, and it was I, I, it was great. What was your question though? I, I didn't Just know, to say, that, do you think that's a good way to build the New Japan brand and sort of get more fans involved? Because you know people are there to maybe watch Street Fighter, yeah. but there's this crazy awesome wrestling yeah. show going on. And now maybe they're a fan. Yeah. So yeah, anytime you can get more fans, yeah, I think it's great. You talk about getting more fans. Um, after leaving WWE, what does it feel like to kind of look back? Have you ever looked back at your matches with the WWE and thinking, man, who in God's name is that? To where are you now thinking, all these people that looked at me before have seen this new side of me. So what does that feel like? I don't watch anything that I did in yeah. <laughs> NXT because, you know, uh, I just want to to go away but I just now being myself and like going out there and just being Joe Robinson but just juice is the name but I'm just me you know and it's so much easier when you don't have to like pretend to be something like I don't okay I care about the planet and stuff like everybody does I care about it but no like I'm not yeah right okay. <laughs> but that wasn't me right mm -hmm. you know I like being a I like being a jerk you know but now it's just me mm -hmm. now I'm just me some people are gonna hate me. That's all right. Some people are gonna like me. So, it's it's really feels good to be able to just be yourself. Yes. That's what I'm. You know, Japan's letting me do. So it's cool. Oh. So uh, doing the back and forth thing, like one thing that usually catches a lot of uh, wrestlers who go to Japan oh. is the difference in the crowds. Like how we're in the United States, it's rah rah, and then it's Japan, it's respectful, and then pops. Um, how was your experience adjusting to the Japanese crowds? Well, you know, they, I, I had lied, I didn't, it didn't take me that long, really. It's, I know that sounds weird. It's not because I'm this amazing pro wrestler, but it's just like, oh, yeah, I've always heard that. They don't make a lot of noise uh, in Japan, but they do. And then you just learn, like, oh, in Japan, man, if somebody grabs you for a belly-to-back suplex and you flip and land on your feet, you're going to go, oh, you know, that's just, it's, you, just, you learn little tricks along the way. I love the Japanese crowds. They're cool. And, like, when, even when something bad's happening to yeah. me and I'm, it's hurting and stuff, they they feel it and they know it. And they, you could hear like the, ah, 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 just the, the noise that they give off is so cool. Yeah. 
No, and uh, I, I always thought of it as like this an elevated, uh, because I grew up in half Asian, half American gross, family. Gross, gross. No, it's just like a respect thing. And oh, that's what I thought yeah, as far as the audience, yeah. oh, very polite. Yeah. And the other thing, everybody knows what we do and what it is, right? They mm. want to go along for the ride. Get lost. That's what I like too, you know? You don't, and they love that. Mm -hmm. They're here, oh, we're going to watch. They know it's a show, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, they, they want to be polite and, I don't know, it's how I, it's, it's how I think pro wrestling should be, how I wish it was everywhere. But you know, U.S. crowds are cool too. Yeah. It's just turned into this completely different animal that, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. Mm -hmm. When I go back and watch wrestling from like, when I was a kid, like, you know, 98, 99, the crowd makes such different noises nowadays. Oh, yeah. I went to, yeah. uh, I was at, I went to WrestleMania. As a fan, I sat in the crowd and watched that whole damn seven hours. And now it's just like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's just, it's cool. I mean, they're, as long as people mm -hmm. are entertained, but it's just so different. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, Juice, they say that uh, nice guys finish last. You're obviously a nice guy. You're in there tomorrow with a switchblade, seemingly not a nice guy. W what's your plan to, to climb that mountain to get your first New Japan gold? I'm gonna roll a motherfucker up. <laughs> no, but I'm not that nice of a guy. I am. I'm okay. Whatever. But yeah, well, I'm gonna fight tomorrow. We're gonna fight. It's gonna. I think it's good. You're not gonna. Like I said, you're not gonna see any Ricky Steamboat arm drags. You know, you're not gonna see any tackle drop down. Get it again tomorrow. Tomorrow it's gonna be. You know, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna. But it's gonna be fun. And uh, I don't know. So you had to answer your question. I want to try to. I hit him with, well, I can't use the left hand of God, as he said, but I'm going to try to hit my finisher, <laughs> or I'm going to try to roll the motherfucker up. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Bret Hart rolled everybody up. <laughs> How's not swearing going? What's that? How's not swearing going? <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of my lexicon. <laughs> I don't have many words. Fuck is one of them. I'm sorry. Bleep. No, you can't apologize. <laughs> you had, you were... Were you going to ask Oh, yeah. Um, you were talking about the difference with American and Japanese crowds. Is it different to get ready to perform for New Japan Pro Wrestling for an American crowd? What's that kind of merging dichotomy thing like? I get nervous, really nervous every time because I'm like, oh, my God, they're just going to see CJ Parker and boo me out of this <laughs> cow palace. So it's just it's, it's scary. And I, I'm really comfortable in front of the Japanese crowd at this point. Like, I feel comfortable. I know, I kind of know what they expect from me, and I know what to expect from them, if you know, if you know yeah. what I mean. But oh, I don't know what to expect. With <laughs> Every time I wrestle in front of American crowds or European crowds, I'm always like, oh, they're going to hate me. Uh, so, I don't know. Tomorrow, I have no idea how they're going to be. I think that, at this point, enough of the stuff that I've done in Japan, people have seen it. At least they know that I'm not shitty little developmental CJ Parker anymore. Yeah. So hopefully I have a little bit of, uh, res not respect, but little, hopefully they cheer me a little. <laughs> so Juice, uh, what does it mean for you as far as, I think the big theme amongst, amongst everyone here today is that they're super excited to be part of this historical event tomorrow at the Cow Palace. And so what does it mean for you to be part of this new chapter of New Japan Pro Wrestling to be expanding here in the U.S.? And it's just gained so much attention all around the world. So for you to be a part of this ride, yeah, what does it mean for you? Dude, it's so cool. It's so great because I have no idea what the hell they're doing. I know they're coming over here. I have no idea how big this is going to get. I know they want it to get real big. And for me to just to have a match tomorrow at the Cow Palace is, would be cool. To have a match that's like the semi-main event is huge. I, I'm so ex it's exciting and it's unpredictable. I have no idea where we're going, but I know it's somewhere cool, mm -hmm. and it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. And I think wrestling purists are just—I can't see it ever changing because if you love pro wrestling the way I like pro wrestling, you're you're gonna watch New Japan over the other guys. I mean, you get one real cool match on Monday Night Raw, I feel, but other than that, it's a bunch of s silly stuff. Sports entertainment. Yeah. Well. Wrestling's entertaining too. New Japan Pro Wrestling is sports entertainment too. I think. Wrestling has always been sports entertainment. It's yeah, entertainment. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I always thought that. So, uh, like, uh, one of the things you did point about was the whole walking on eggshells thing in the past. Yeah. Uh, but uh, wait, Paul. Like one thing I noticed. Uh, that, like one cool thing about your story. Uh, like to make a WWE analogy, like Kalisto. Uh, like back when he was on Raw, when he's on Two Hundred Five Live now. Uh, it looks like you know uh, people seem to perform better when they're simply having fun. But to uh, sidetrack that a little bit, 
Uh, what's the most fun thing about being in Japan right now <laughs> for you? Oh my gosh. Well, now that I've been there about three years, mm -hmm. I'm starting to finally be like, all right, I don't have to get hammered every night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to go out and stay up late every night on sp at sponsored dinners and just drink and scream karaoke and go crazy. <laughs> so I'm starting to settle down there. I actually got a Nintendo Switch finally. I'm trying mm -hmm. to really keep myself in my hotel room. But just the wrestling, just the mm -hmm. fact that uh, once a, once or twice a tour, we're in front of big ass crowds. Mm. You know, sold like so big sold out shows. The wrestling is just so fun. I love wrestling. I love getting on the bus, driving all day, sitting there, <laughs> drinking a coffee, and then going out and wrestling. And then afterwards, I draw. Just wrestling. I love mm. it. I love the food too a lot. That's their their food is better than ours. It's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. yeah. So. What, what are you? Oh, no, sorry. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> Uh, what are your th what are your thoughts on like um, older wrestlers that complain that there's not enough story and character nowadays, uh, you know, in wrestling, and it's more based on moves and and the athletic performance, but not the character and story. What are your thoughts on that? I agree with them a hundred percent. I feel like that that I don't. There's so I mean, uh, it's great stuff, right? But it seems like a lot of the same stuff. Like I did that, I went to WrestleMania in New Orleans and did like a bunch of, I don't know, where I had to do like WrestleCon, I don't know what it was, but I did a few shows, right, a few independent shows, and I watched a lot of matches. I was like, man, if I see one more dude do a fake damn dive into a cartwheel round off, like, ooh, look at me, I'm going to just jump off this wherever I was sitting, it was high, I was going to kill myself. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I, I don't really like that kind of, I like that kind of wrestling, like, I love it, but I, lo I like the characters and the story, and it, dude, I, it doesn't take that many moves. I like the intensity and stuff behind wrestling. I agree with the old timers that say that. In a lot of ways, not in every case, not everybody's like that, but there are a lot of guys that are just, mm -hmm. as I guess I would say, move guys. Mm -hmm. Cool, though. A lot of fans love that shit. I don't care about it, though. I like the stories and, like, oh, I don't know. You know, you know what I like. That, that's what gives you the feels, you know, the costumes, the mm -hmm. character. What's this guy going to say? What's this guy going to do? You know, that stuff. Like, this guy has an identity. I know what a Kenny Omega is, you know what I mean? I, I, he he does all the moves, but he's not. He does. He tells stories too. Like, uh, yeah, there is a lot of move guys. I yeah, I thought you. I'm sorry. You asked. Yeah, too many move guys. I agree with the old timers. Yeah, to put it plain and simple. Do you think that maybe is sort of the source in a company like WWE where you get like more of the fan rebellion because they don't have those characters to invest in? So why am I supposed to cheer this guy just because I'm told to for reasons? Man, I don't. I, I think that the big thing with maybe that WWE is they're not letting just... It seemed like when I we used to watch, like Stone Cold got over and then he was the guy. Yeah. It wasn't like, uh, you, the handsome 6'4 guy in the back who's jacked as hell, you're going to be the top guy. And regardless of what the audience says, we're just going to make you the top guy. We're going to do it until they accept it. Well, I don't know if that works. I think it's better off just like, okay, everybody go. Oh, this guy's getting over. These guys kind of aren't. This guy's really getting over. Maybe this guy should be the, this guy should be the guy that we push. That's what I think. I don't know if I even came close to answering your no, question, you but I think that's a, kind of the problem with it. When I watch it, it's like, man, they've never. It's like they've really wanted certain guys to. Like, I don't know. It, sometimes it doesn't work. And you can't force it. It doesn't need to be forced. Somebody's gonna get over. Push that guy. Like Daniel Bryan, that's why I love that Daniel Bryan stuff so much a few years ago. Man, he refused to not be over. Eventually they were like, fine, you will be in WrestleMania in the main event. Oh, we can't deny him any longer, you know what I mean? And that's good shit. Uh, who do you feel you've learned the most from in the ring so far in your uh, young career? In, in Japan? Overall. Overall, who? It's got to be Tanahashi. And it's not even necessarily like, he does, it's not like he sits me down as like, all right, and teaches me like they just I watch him and lead, he leads by example and then he does say little bits and pieces along the way but I think he's got to be one of the top and then Dusty Rhodes too he as far as like talking and promos and like he believes like what wrestling is just about feeling and emotion that's all I want to be like that so Dusty Tanashi thank you
you don't have to say any names, but does any of your old uh, peers from the past hit you up and uh, say, hey, you've done so well in New Japan, like, I'm not having the fun anymore. How do I get there? Like, <laughs> what can I do to take your route? You know? Dude, if you know, so many of my friends, it's like, I get messages all the time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, yeah. I haven't talked to you in three years. All of a sudden, <laughs> you all, you know all of a sudden yeah, we're good friends, but all of a sudden you don't work there. I get a giant, oh, well, it looks like he's looking to get a job. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it, uh, it was a lot when, you know, people, that's what you do in wrestling. Though. Yeah. Oh, lost my job. I need a job. There's only, like, four places. He's my friend. We'll see what the <laughs> see what the weather is over there, yeah. you know what I mean? But, yeah, that happens a lot. It becomes nauseating at times, but... No, I, I forget. I'd be doing the same thing. Did uh, Matt Bloom hook you up? I forget. Oh. Well, yeah, it was kind of like a perfect storm yeah. of. Uh, so Matt Bloom became my friend because it was like Sweet Tea or something wrestling with Brody <laughs> Play, right? Mm -hmm. And then he would come down and do like uh, like an NXT show every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then he slowly became like commentator of NXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was doing that CJ CJ Parker stuff, and we would I don't know. Eventually, we started talking about like Grateful Dead and like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hit it off. We became friends. Then all of a sudden, he was a coach. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, this guy's a coach." But we, were, we already had that relationship. And then he became the head coach. And I had been talking about leaving for probably a year or so. And then when he had always said, "Well, if you ever do, you could wrestle him, or I could try to get you a look for New Japan." And I would always say, "Jesus, get out of here! Me wrestle in New Japan?" Because I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't at that point. I really didn't. I knew I know a little bit about it, but I didn't know what to expect. I thought everybody was like Minoru Suzuki versus Yuji Nagata, and I was like, "That's not my kind of wrestling." Little did I know, there's also Yanos and Taguchis and Tanahashis, and there's all kinds of everything in wrestling. It's just it's the exact same shit. You know what I mean? Uh, but then. The sorry, I'm rambling. Then the uh, WrestleMania here happened, mm -hmm. and I was doing WrestleMania Access, mm -hmm. and I was out there wrestling, and they were inducting uh, Fujinami into the Hall of Fame. So uh, Tiger Tori, um, Sugabayashi, and a few other people were there, and I had already quit. Everybody knew I had quit. Of, this was my last week, and I was just hanging out with my friends, and. Uh, they're like, Adore, you gotta watch this guy, man. He's he's just quit. Like he bring him to Japan. And, and then Atori was like, Oh man, he he good, he's good. Okay. And then <laughs> fast forward two months, that's like how it was. It was just oh luckily he walked by and watched the monitor when I was acting like a complete asshole in the ring though. I was like Shawn Michaels was doing an autograph. This boss man, I'm glad I had no idea that they were watching and I was essentially doing like a job interview i'm tuning up the band call myself mr wrestlemania access because Shawn michaels was doing an autograph signing you know how those things the access mm -hmm. like uh, less than a football field away mm -hmm. but i was just being a complete asshole and Latori apparently thought it was okay <laughs> i know that you, you joke a lot and humor is a big part of or your mentality and your style but you know and, and i know moving to florida is one thing but there's a lot of sacrifice in what you did too obviously you said there aren't many promotions but you could have stayed stateside can you talk about the sacrifices you made in moving to Japan? Well, yeah, I just, I don't have a house now. I, I don't live anywhere. I'm in, I live in a bag, and I've lived in a bag now since I left mm. WB like three years ago. I live in a suitcase. Mm. So that is kind of weird, you know. <laughs> if you, I always am living in a suitcase. Even when I'm in Chicago at my dad's house, sleeping on a futon, there's my you know, bag right there, you know, I'm just pulling clothes out of it. So that that's a bit of a, sac uh, a sacrifice. I could have a girlfriend. I should, probably should have a girlfriend. I don't because I'm in Japan at all times. And, um, so I, I should be starting a family. Right? There's a lot of shit that I should be doing right now in my life <laughs> that I'm not doing because I love pro wrestling so much. But that, that'll all be fine one day. It'll all work out. Everybody okay? Oh, good. One question? What, All right. what games are you playing on the Switch? Oh, oh okay. Uh, that the Zelda. Yeah. I don't even know what it's called. The Winds of, of the Earth, Earth or some Breath of the Wild. Of the Wild. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's gonna take me about three years. Bro. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I play a video, I haven't played video games since I was like thirteen. So I just, I'm trying to stop drinking as much and train more <laughs> and have something to do in the room. And that is going to keep me busy. And then I got RBI Baseball. It sucks, dude. It's <laughs> terrible. I, I like the game, the, the baseball games where it's like the blue, red, and the, where you can throw the, make 
the mm -hmm. ball move where you yeah. want it to move. That's the whole damn fun part of the game. Mm -hmm. and you just It's like an arcade <laughs> piece of crap. I shouldn't have bought it. <laughs> the old school RB baseball? Whatever RBI baseball 2018 for those switches totally sucks. Yeah. I would say don't waste your time. Do not buy it. Zelda? Yeah. Oh, one more hand. How's it feeling? It, dude, it actually has gotten... It's actually starting to feel better the last like week or so. For the first, I don't know, it's been about three weeks. For the first week and, and set, or a week and a half, it just hurt all the time. Like it was constantly hurting. I should probably shouldn't have been wrestling on it either. But the last week, it's really uh, gotten a lot better. I mean, I've been, I've been when I was home, I was trying to sleep like twelve hours a day, and I was trying to eat like so much, and I was taking like calcium and uh, magnesium supplements, and just like icing and be like, please, do good enough to where I don't have a shitty match in San Francisco, please. So I think it'll be okay. But it's still broken. Mm. You ever uh, think about venturing out in the Chicago comedy scene? Oh, uh, no. I'm not, I could. Um, no. <laughs> Never be a stand up. I, yeah. Improv. Like, in, oh, I would like to do that, to play around or something like that. Chicago's improv. Yeah. Yeah, Second City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second City and mm -hmm. stuff. Improv like Olympic. That. Yeah. The Noise Theater. I would be open to it. I never really thought about it, though. I don't know if I'd be any good at it. What's that? Call you? <laughs> All right, I'll call you. <laughs> Bucket list match. You have a list. Um, one, like, one re person you'd love to wrestle. And that's alive right now? That's alive right now. Oh, shit. Dream like, dream match, if you could wrestle, uh, wrestle Kingdom next year against someone. God. <laughs> Okada, Okada sure. Yeah. yeah, he's the main <laughs> man, man. Yeah. Nice. Anytime you're wrestling him at Wrestle Kingdom main event, you're doing good. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I want to wrestle Okada in the main event at Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> I'm doing that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good bucket list. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Everybody good? Thank you. Yeah, thank you yeah. for all your time. They'll be watching tomorrow. Oh, yeah. sweet. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks very much. You. No problem. Thank you.